Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by Coach Me Plus. Coach Me Plus is the leader in athlete management software and a product that we've been lucky enough to implement here for over two years now. The product in and of itself is exactly what you need it to be, guys, with options ranging from being a workout provider, as in sending the workout directly to the student athlete's phones, to being a place where you can communicate with them and bring together multiple streams of data to be its own dashboard for you, your coaching staff, or the athletes. Or you can use what we've added to our, our menu of Coach Me Plus activities, and that's the Hydration Station, where all of this information that is provided is based off of research from the Corey Stringer Institute, where we're looking at weighing in versus weighing out and then providing optimal hydration uh, strategies for the student athletes by them selecting through the menu and tapping on what they'll take home with them and what they're consuming prior to the next practice um, when all the numbers at the top are lined up green. It's something we've had really good success with and the kids have really bought in on. Just another great example of the awesome product that you can find at coachmeplus.com. Guys, hop over to coachmeplus.com today and check it out. It's a product I guarantee you won't be disappointed with. Hey, everybody. If you enjoy the podcast and the content it provides, be sure to hop over and check out the community. The community is an exclusive members website that is just an extension of what we do here in July at the Central Virginia Sport Performance Seminar. What it is is a combination of video lectures, a coach's corner with your Monday morning take-home information, and a forum where you can talk about anything and everything related to the field of strength and conditioning. In the community, you'll find content added each month from some of the top practitioners in the world, ranging from PhDs to high-level coaches, bringing you exactly what they're doing with their athletes or their research at the present moment. On top of that, an additional discussion by coaches bringing you that Monday morning information, things that you can add to your training program right away. Tying that in with the opportunity to discuss with coaches around the world in the forum on anything and everything from the topics addressed in these presentations to whatever you're seeing in your daily life as a coach. If this sounds like the right thing for you and your staff, go ahead and hop over to cvasps.com slash community and try it out for 48 hours for just a dollar. If you like it, you're signed up, ready to roll, and you're jumping into all the great content added each month. If not, feel free to go ahead and cancel at any time. No questions asked. We're really excited about what we're building in the community and hope you are too. Go ahead and hop over to cvasps.com slash community and check it out today. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today, guys, we have an absolutely killer talk with the University of Texas's Associate Director of Applied Sports Sciences, Matt Van Dyke. Matt's going to dive right in, guys, talking about his path to get to Texas and how relationships that he's made along the way have driven him in both avenues as a coach and as a sports scientist. We then start talking about his role, or excuse me, the role of coaches uh, to the profession, meaning how sharing is so important and, and how it's driving us forward and how he sees his role in that whole sharing, pushing us forward uh, kind of realm. We then get into the challenges of the position and, and how moving from coaching to the applied sports science side uh, has been really a, an awesome challenge and what the transition has been like and how focusing on just one aspect now has helped him dive deeper into things. We then get into you know, some of the data they're looking at and what they're looking at and how it's contributing to the program and they're doing at Texas. And we finish off discussing how the, his role at Denver helped prep him at Texas and what he's learned along the way from whether it be mistakes or things that he would change he did in the past at these two positions where he just had to hit the ground running. Guys, this is really an awesome talk. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Let's get right to it. Matt, thank you so much for being with us today, bud. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is this is one I've been looking forward to for a long time, man. And it's uh, Let's first start out. And, and let's let people know who is Matt Van Dyke and what is going on, man. Where are you at? Where you been? What you doing? All right. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for the intro. But Matt Van Dyke uh, played, um, got first involved strength and conditioning um, at Iowa State, played football there. Um, started that in, what, 08? And then progressed through my college career. Um, basically, first day in the weight room, fell in love with what was going on. And, and it was kind of like that moment where I always knew I wanted to be involved in athletics. 
um, was thinking more of maybe the pre-med or, or physical therapy route, but got involved in the weight room, saw what, what happened in that, um, in that setting every day and pretty much told myself, I was like, this would be a dream job. So, um, finished up, um, career at Iowa state, stayed on interned there under that staff. So that's the, uh, Yancey McKnight was there when I was there and then, um, progressed into an internship with Cal, uh, Dietz at Minnesota. From there, went on to St. Cloud State, did my master's um, up there, so a little uh, like central Minnesota, I guess you could say, and then uh, ended up back at Minnesota after that full-time um, as an assistant for Cal. Was there for about six months, and Cal kind of looked at me, and he's like, okay, it's time to move on. So I ended up um, taking a position at the University of Denver, um, progressed into being the Associate Director of Sports Performance under Matt Shaw out there. Um, kind of first experience as being the uh, head strength coach of multiple teams. Um, so my first year there, I had six teams, and it was it was it was a rush. Let's say um, you stay busy when you have that many teams and trying to program for things like that. Um, but then from there, uh, was there for two and a half years, and then just recently came down here to the uh, University of Texas. So. I am the Associate Director of Applied Sports Science down here, uh, but I work with, uh, specifically with uh, the University of Texas football team as um, their sports scientist. And you've done some writing, publishing, oh, yeah. things like yeah. that. Just stay a couple busy. things. Yeah, stay busy. I mean, um, definitely having the, um, the foundation of the coaches that I had in college, It's um, you, you kind of hear... Some, uh, some, some people have the horror stories. Some people have the great stories of their strength coaching college. I was definitely the one that, that had a, a great experience, um, saw what it meant to work as a team as far as from a coaching staff. So that was, that was awesome. But then working with uh, Cal, getting to see more and more of the triphasic, um, ended up one day, it, it's kind of like the question I think every intern, and, and we ask our interns this too, it's what are you doing to separate yourself from all the other, other candidates that are looking at that same position? So whether it's moving into a GA role, whether it's moving into your first full-time position. And for me, um, it started out as being a blog page. And, and I, I, I'm sure I have it somewhere saved on my computer where I can favorite it and go back to it. But um, just this, this basic little WordPress started writing, um, wrote a few things. It was, kind of, it was kind of like a review of a few books that I'd read basically and put my thoughts of training with them. And then um, had the experience with Cal at that point, and he reached out and he's like, hey, let's start writing this and this and this. So it kind of snowballed from there to the point where now it's, it's been two, two or maybe three books with Cal that we've come out with, um, all in the triphasic-based uh, approach. And then also now with uh, Max uh, Schmarzo, Strong by Science, uh, we've done two and we're, and we're kind of feeling out the third one right now so it, it's it's in the it's in the making but it, it's it's kind of slow right now with both of us being pretty busy obviously with our um normal everyday jobs oh yeah and two pretty good guys to have your name tied to yeah absolutely I, I mean i've been really fortunate um even from the beginning to have to have great coaches um to be able to bounce ideas back and forth off of i mean obviously cal has has made a tremendous impact in the in strength and conditioning, but also sports science realms as far as how he's approached the loading of his athletes. And, and we always said, it's like, we don't, um, we, we don't just make our athletes bigger, stronger, faster. It's like true training. So it's like, how do we create resiliency to the stressors that are required on the field? And, and that's been a huge piece uh, of, of my development. And then Max, it was Max. It was just completely random. He already had a big following and it, and it was actually, um, the glute layering model that, that we put in um, the manual to your book. Mm -hmm. And he reached out through Instagram one day and we kind of got to talking and he's like, this is really cool. Kind of talked through some points back and forth. And from there um, we got into kind of like moving beyond that. Cause I know that's the big question everybody gets with it is okay. That's really cool. It's like these five 20 minute ISOs with paired with like the 3d contralateral things like that. But what does it look like? Big picture. And then we started talking about more of the power development, how we can apply pr programming to continue along that glute firing pattern, things like that, but production of total body power. And then ended up, we thought we were going to do this little like 
15 page write up and it turned into uh, whatever 100 page that um, power manual, the optimal power development. So it's awesome. And all that stems because somebody had a question and asked it. Imagine that, you know, like so many people are so afraid to reach out to somebody in any medium right now and ask a question. Absolutely. Yeah. And even, even like that when I, when I'm reading through different books, like I'll reach out to people, whether they suggested the book to me, like talking through, okay, this is how I read this. Is that how you read that? And, and it's just, I, I think unfortunately our, our industry is still ego driven as far as um, like, I think, I think part of it is everybody wants to try, try and keep what they're doing as a secret. And it, and that's what, I've tried to do kind of the opposite approach as best as I can is, is anything that I'm doing is, is we're trying to get out there for other coaches to use. Now they might not be able to use it in the same fashion, but at least to some extent, extent they can apply those concepts. Yeah. And I think that that's like, that that's like the best thing I've heard in a very long time, because that's like exactly what we're trying to do. And I think that the problem though, you're right. There's the ego, but then there's also how that ego is connected to the fact that people are so afraid of being like, you know, uh, I was thinking about using it this way. And then, you know, Matt being like, eh, that's not probably the best way to do it. You know, and it, it's, it's crazy to me. We even talk about that. Like, like CSCCA was just a few weeks ago now and, and talking through, you have some outstanding coaches that that are speaking at those events but even then some of like the practical it's just not shared or or when you see it's the same thing on social media somebody posts something and it's you're seeing one exercise of one training day out of the entire year and people jump all over it and it's like you have no idea if you take a, a big step back of what phase of training that coach is in unless they really want to dive into it in their explanation but it's just like we get these little snapshots and then we all want to like hop on and basically say, Oh, like you should use this exercise. This exercise is better or this training load, like model, whatever. And and I think, I think that's the other piece too, is being able to take that step back and say, okay, like that I, I like to talk to our interns about applying concepts. It's like at this time of the year, our goal and maybe early off season is to, get our athletes functioning at a really high level. We should get energy systems developed because those are going to lay the foundation for everything else. And then we can progress into strength and then maybe power and speed. But if you're skipping forward to that one snapshot, because everybody, nobody wants to show the GPP work. Everybody wants to show the, the snapshot of the really cool thing and then everybody's jumping on it, but they don't know what's been done either leading up to that or what's going to be done after it. No, no doubt. And uh, It's... And I think that that's funny because a lot of people, I mean, then, so we're talking and yesterday, Chris McCormick's podcast came out. So this is going to be probably about six or eight weeks after that. But it's, uh, you know, how he talks about basically like everybody wants to make things look like it's all sunshine and rainbows on social media. And it's like, there's a lot of bullshit, <laughs> you know, Yeah. like everywhere. Well, that's what even even when you start writing about things like that, you still get the questions be like, I don't understand how you can implement this. And, and the way that I've written things, obviously it does require like the block periodization to fit in. Like you can't spend 20 minutes for five weeks straight. If you're also on like blue ISOs, if you're also trying to do um, like strength work or like true, like higher intensity conditioning, things like that. So, so it's definitely relative to each coach's, philosophy and I think that's the other piece that that we have to make sure that we're taking account of is that not everyone has the same settings or the same background and and so how I apply things like the glute layering what it looks like for some of the athletes here at Texas if we're if we're implementing that that it looks entirely different than how I've done it at Denver but it's still applying the same concept and model it's just a different approach yeah well and now let's since you've touched on that transition a little bit, let's let's run with that a little bit. It, other than geographical elevational and elevation, you know, big difference, and and then you know uh, temperature changes. Let's talk about the changes going from the pioneers to the Longhorns and what you know how how that 
role change has been both positive and a challenge. Yeah. Um, I think, I think I'm going to start with positive. Um, it, it's been an outstanding opportunity here to try and um, develop my skills as far as like the sports science approach goes. So I spent a few years now um, doing sports performance, the, the strength and conditioning aspect of it. And, and again, really fortunate to have great role models all the way through college of, of sound approach. And then also with Cal um, that I felt that I had a pretty good grasp on the, um, the, the sports performance, not that it's forever not changing because it's always changing. It's, it's constantly evolving, but for, for where I was at, I felt like I was trying to do too many things at one time. So it's, it's, we kind of joke about it, but it's almost like the, the approach where you're trying to train all of these things at once. I was trying to be, um, help athletes a lot with their nutrition. I was the sport performance and I was also running all of the science. So at Denver, that would have been the Athos EMG, the, the catapult, any wellness questionnaires. And I was handling that for four teams basically when I left. So I was trying to wear a lot of hats and do a lot of different things, wow. which, which is exciting. Like that, that, that for me, like you see the holistic approach and what's required. Uh, but I felt that I had a pretty good handle um, because of my nutrition experience at, in my master's program that I, I was fortunate enough to have. Um, and then also from the, the sport performance standpoint, being, being with these high level coaches prior and having my own experience for a few years. Um, and then also, like you're saying, having continued um, conversations with people like Max and then, and then Cal, of course. But so I felt it, w it was a good opportunity for me to focus a lot of my efforts on more of the sports science and how we can take those concepts of whether it be nutrition or the, um, the uh, strength and conditioning and apply it based on what the data is saying. So understanding how we can create adaptations with our athletes has been huge. Um, and then I can take it. And when we do see certain deficiencies in our guys that we can go back in and say, Hey, this is how we've applied this to fix it in the past. How can we apply this maybe even on a larger scale with having basically 110 athletes now that you're dealing with. So I think the, the pro has been kind of take off a few of the hats, even though, and, and it's been awesome because um, university of Texas has great resources that um, as far as we have a nutrition team, we've got um, obviously fully staffed, uh, football strength and conditioning, and then athletic training as well. So I serve as kind of, I'm not, I'm not necessarily tied with any one party, but I work with each of those parties to help give our athletes the greatest experience possible based on an individual athlete's needs. So I'd say that's been, that's been one of the coolest experiences to, is to see how we can, um, individualize some of the training completed or some of the recovery protocols by our athletes. And then even from a buy-in standpoint, um, when you're, it's easy when you deal with a large group of athletes, they kind of get clumped together, whether that be position or whatever it is. Uh, it's easy for them to kind of almost get thrown into a group and then said, okay, you're going to do this. And, and, but when they start to see that this program has been created specifically based on their needs, I think from, from a standpoint, even like, um, a buy-in, it's, it's just increases to that, um, that much of a greater extent. I love it. So then how are you, or what are you evaluating with these guys? Yeah. So, um, on field, we've got, um, the, the, um, GPS units that we're using for monitoring, um, and then as far as in the weight room, we've got velocity-based pieces like that that we're tracking a little bit more long-term to see those changes in those athletes. Uh, but the, the a big piece is the movement screen that we're doing. Uh, so basically uh, um, taking those athletes through and, and determining their loading angles on a single leg versus a double leg squat or jump or what their shoulder internal external range of motion is. And, and it's a little more uh, in depth than, than e even what I've used in the past. So we used to do, um, at Denver, we, we would do gait and basically we'd have to take the iPad out and we'd film our athletes just walking. 
and maybe maybe we're looking at a lateral sling so on the frontal plane can they stabilize or does that hip drop when they're in that basically single leg uh, support phase and so th this movement screen is going to allow us to turn around and start to maybe it's weakness that that athlete's experiencing in that maybe or maybe it's just a lack of mobility and they're starting to compensate elsewhere so basically through breaking down that movement screen we can start to build out an athlete's program for um, maybe the mobility that they're seeing and then potentially in the uh, in the strength template as well to give them the the greatest likelihood of either reducing injury likelihood or um, improving performance I love that and how, can you talk about how you're looking at that or no? Um, or what you're looking at that with? Would that be okay? Like the system? Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're using um, DARI motion capture. So it basically has 19 different tests that you can take the athlete through. So it's basically four or five shoulder exercises, some rotational work, uh, and then – into more of like single leg, double leg squat, single leg, double leg jump, counter movement, depth jump, um, things along those lines. And then from there it spits out, you can have it. Um, I mean, it's, it's more numbers than you'd ever, I mean, you can take the time and look through it, but when you're dealing with a hundred guys, we've kind of keyed in on a few variables that we're looking at. Uh, but basically, um, and again, it's, it's been really cool to see how each of the places I've been have, have basically laid the foundation for what I've done at the next place. So, um, even from Iowa state being an athlete up to Minnesota, it was more of the, the organizational approach, things like that. And then Cal is obviously huge on the triphasic, the, um, um, like physiological understanding. And that was what my advisor in grad school was. So those opportunities kind of paired together, then brought that theory, um, out and Matt Shaw was already doing a lot of it in Denver, but brought that out to Denver. And then out there, it was much more of the, um, three-dimensional um, movement understanding. So a lot of the Gary Gray work, so um, like single leg support or the ability to get get your hips to function in all three planes, things like that. And so each of those have, have played a role in, in how we're integrating that DARI and what we're seeing into those mobility programs. Oh, so as far as, as, yeah, as far as like, how we're saying um, if an athlete's struggling in a certain plane, then what mobility are they going to see? What, um, what, um, whether that be rolling out, whether that be um, something on a power plate, things like that, exercises along those lines, like more true mobility, or is it more of, um, and, I, and I don't really like the word activation, but from an activation standpoint, getting that muscle to actually fire in that position that you're trying to get it into, um, but all of those have played a huge role in, in basically what we're trying, what we're integrating here at Texas with our guys. So let me let me ask you kind of a different question. Then following through with that is, you know, obviously it's a different creature that you're dealing with, you know, down there in Austin, in a lot of different ways. How was the work that you did at Denver? leading into it when it comes to that kind of monitoring aspect and the evaluatory sense, um, how was that going to be able to transfer into what you're doing now? And how much of that have you had to just completely reassess and reevaluate because you're dealing with like the pinnacle of like mankind's outputs right now? Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely been different. Uh, I will say that the experience from transitioning from sport performance into sport science, I think if you're going to go the sport science route, you have to have some type of coaching background. And, and I say that by my definition of sport science is going to be uh, someone that can take all of this data, like the, like the story that's going to spit out a seven page report or catapult that's going to spit out more variables than than you'd ever actually use or need and being able to take that to someone whether that be athletic training whether that be a uh, nutritionist whether that be a, a the sport coach themselves or that be strength and conditioning and be able to not only interpret 
that data, but then provide a, a course of action that's going to allow change if change is needed. And, and, I, and I think I think that's the the more conversations I have, the more I see that there, there's kind of like two different directions that this is going. There is the there is the um, more sports science, and, and again, it's so wide open now. The positions are kind of just starting to roll out that it, it's pretty much the wild, wild west. You can make sports science whatever you want it to be, but from my perspective, I think that is that's the most um, applicable approach. And, and obviously, I was a coach, so I, I get a little biased in there with that. But but as far as like the two different types, there's um, more of like the true like data analyst, the the statistics um, type where that that is not me like I can't do all of that stuff um, I, I've been working to get a little bit better at it but you I would much rather see somebody that can take what you're getting um, from an output standpoint and then get another coach to understand that and then say hey to address this in the past we've changed from this type of exercise to this type of exercise or hey instead of doing um, because this period of practice led to this change in player load. What if we took these two periods out to give ourselves the weekly loading model that we want? And so being able to understand, but also give a coach what they want. Because if I walked up with a different plan to a coach and it was completely different than what they've done for their entire career, like here at Texas, like there's a reason these coaches are at Texas, right? Because they're good coaches, and, and they're good athletic trainers and good nutritionists. And, and that's another benefit of my position is I'm working around great people. But it's like if I go in with a plan that completely goes 180 to what they've done, they're going to look at it and say thanks and throw it away. So it's kind of this this skill of, of okay, we need to go this route. How can we fit this into the, the training that you're already doing or the, the practice plans that you already have made? so that we can achieve from a loading standpoint what's going to give our guys the best chance to compete on a Saturday or game day. I like it. I like it. And it helps, too, when you've got the throw bits. Yeah, definitely doesn't hurt if, if you're recruiting some really high-level guys. I, so, some of these guys walk in the door, and it's like you are 18 years old. And, and it's – I mean, you see the stories on on social media all the time, like the different – basically other like higher level programs and the athletes they bring in. And it's just like, yeah, they're, they're out there and they're real. But when you see them in person, it's just different. No, so. couldn't, couldn't agree more with that. So now let me, let me ask you this just as a selfish standpoint, you know, you've basically been at two places where you've kind of hit the ground running. What are some things that you've learned in this process of designing, implementing and practicing sports science that Matt looks back and is just like, oh, my God, what was he doing? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say it's definitely – it's been really beneficial in the fact that the strength staff here is the staff that I played under in college. So I'm pretty familiar with them as far as, like, with their thought processes. And, and, and obviously they've progressed in the last – what's it been, seven years that I – that or, no, four years that since I've been out of college, seven since I kind of first saw them. But – um but I think I think the biggest thing is for me is 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 kind of what I just explained is not understanding that you don't have complete control. Like you're not the strength staff anymore. You're not like you have you have five athletic trainers that you have to make sure you're all on the same page now with instead of at Denver, it was just like one. And, and or even from a nutritionist standpoint, like we really didn't have a full time nutritionist at Denver. I know they're working on creating that position, but um, or they're, they're attempting to, to some extent. And it's, um, being not necessarily the lead, you think things are going to go a lot smoother because, and again, you, when you've been somewhere for a long time, you have, you've laid the foundation the first year and then years two and basically two and a half to three. Now you're putting all of your systems into place versus you forget what that year one is really like. And then you go back to ground zero and it's like, okay, we have to start from the, the beginning with some of these um, processes that you're trying to implement. And I think that's been the biggest thing is like the first few months, and, and, I, and I think this goes for any job transition there. I mean, even up to the first year, you kind of really get things rolling, but especially the first few months, if you're coming from somewhere where you've been there for a long time and you've kind of 
been the lead person for, for your kind of specialty as far as the strength and conditioning, you have to take that step back and, and realize that not everyone does things the same way that you do. And okay, how can we take bits and pieces of this and start to implement it? Or, or as I like to say, like when I talked with people, um, with, with other, uh, again, strength staff, athletic training or nutrition, it's kind of planting little seeds of discussion that we can grow upon. And then we start to tie a lot of our systems in based on their approach, um, to, to what the end goal is. I love it. I love it. And that's fantastic because understanding that you have to fit into the puzzle and not fit the puzzle around you is pretty important. Exactly. Yeah, man. No, I love it. And Matt, this is absolutely killer stuff, buddy. I'm glad we finally got this down. It's, uh, I, I can't thank you enough for spending the time with us today, man. It's, uh, this is great. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. I've been, I mean, you know, Max was on a few weeks ago. He's telling me about his great experience, so I've, I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, man. Well, listen, dude, I appreciate the time, and we'll be in touch real soon, brother. This is killer. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And a huge thanks to Matt Van Dyke for spending the time with us today. Guys, absolutely fantastic stuff. Open, honest, candid sharing. A guy who's working with really some of the best thoroughbreds in the country when it comes to football, sharing with us what he's doing and how they're looking at things and Really, the directions they're trying to go. I, I cannot thank Matt enough for taking the time with us today and being so open, honest, and candid with all the sharing. And as always, guys, if you did enjoy the talk, please share it through the social media outlet of your choice, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. Again, we are just trying to get the best information out to all the great coaches that we possibly can. And as always, thank you for everything that you do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We will be back next week with another awesome guest. We will see you then.